What's good YouTube? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back to AM Island Vibe. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing alright. Today we're here with, uh, what his nigga name is? A. Wolvesy. I swear to God. Future Young Don. You know y'all know Young Don, the sauce guy. You know, animation king. You know what I mean? That's my boy. We used to, we used to be up in Jamaica the, uh, couple couple years back, sitting under the tree. You know, peeling some bananas and, and eating some mangoes, you know, eating some, you know. That's what we used to do back when we was in, when we was in Jamaica, you know. I used to be kicking with him back in Jamaica, you know what I mean? That's my boy, we used to be walking to school together in our brown uniform, you know what I mean? Under the Aki tree sitting down, you know, eating some, <laughs> some, some unripe Aki's, you know. Just chilling, just chilling, you know. Some bread fruit, you know what it is. But, if you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff down below in the comment section. Anything you guys want to see me react to, let me know and I'll get to it as soon as possible. With that being said, let's get into the video! We all hate confrontation, right? Can we all agree on this? Yes, we're all on the same webpage, we're all using the same Wi-Fi. The breeding care. ground for a lot of confrontation, for a lot of us, is that, can anybody guess it? Anybody? You with your hand up? Work. You got it. As some of you guys know, my last 9 to 5 was me lifeguarding at the Hard Rock Hotel. <sighs> I worked at Hard Rock for five plus years. I'm about to tell y'all about a scenario that would happen and I would let it happen every single year. One day I make up my mind that I'm gonna start conquering my fear. Confrontation was the first thing on the list that I decided I'm going to just not run from and embrace it and face it head on. If I have all these fears and I don't do anything about it, I'm just gonna live my life in fear. Do you secretly start to shift your behavior and your decisions to avoid this thing that you're afraid of? I make this decision during the summer, which is the busiest time for any lifeguard anywhere, even the lifeguards in Wisconsin. Hard Rock Hotel in Orlando is actually connected to Universal Studios, so we're walking distance from the parks. The problem that we started running into was guests would come out at the butt crack of dawn, lay out their towels, some sandcastle buckets, and maybe a shovel, and go off to the parks for eight hours. When enough people do this, at 12 o'clock noon, the people who are actually trying to jump in the pool come outside, no chairs or tables available, standing room only, and only four people are on the pool deck. That's a problem. We even have servers who walk around the pool deck and bring you food, drinks, whatever. One day I'm on the guard stand, your horror walks up to me and she says, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills this month. What you mean? Every day I come to work, there's nobody out here and there's nobody to serve. People come outside, they see there's no seats, they go back inside. Imagine walking into a restaurant like Chili's and every seat is taken with somebody's purse or just random crap scattered everywhere, but the restaurant is empty and you can't sit down. That's the equivalent of what's going on right now. And I didn't think about it like that. So that little guy on my shoulder is like, remember you said you're going to face confrontation. You don't really need to face confrontation. It's not really your job. You're just a lifeguard. I know in the back of my head that if I start moving people's towels, that's going to lead to confrontation. Maybe I should take this up with Jimmy, our supervisor. So I go to the fitness center. That's where the office is. Here's the thing about Jimmy. Jimmy's so laid back, I'm pretty sure every day he comes into work, He's under the influence of something. Jimmy, people out here reserving seats, can't nobody sit down, servers can't get paid. What should we do? Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's not even our department, bro. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. We're the ones that have to pick up towels. I think that falls into our department. Jimmy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what do we do about these towels? Should I pick them up? Should I leave them there? What should I do? No, bro. You don't even trip. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. Just watch the water. That's all you gotta do. But each day goes by, these servers going home broke. Every morning, I watch people come out, reserve like 10 chairs, lay all their crap out, and then leave. I'm watching these servers stand around, not getting any money for six, seven hours. I'm watching these guests come out, they can't sit nowhere. If you do something, it's gonna lead to confrontation, just so you know. I come up with this system. We had a problem with locals that would sneak onto our pool deck, so anybody that came onto the pool deck, you just show your room key and we give you a wristband. I launched my whole plan with a clipboard. I didn't need the clipboard, but I know if I'm standing outside with a clipboard, I'm gonna look official. I grab a stack of these wristbands. First thing in the morning, Nobody's in the pool, so I'm just standing out there, looking. I'll see a guest come outside, she starts laying down her stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at her, 
But when we make eye contact, I'll look down and I'll write something, and I'll look back at her. So we keep laying her stuff out now. She's starting to look a little nervous. She'll walk inside. I walk over. I take the wristband. I write down the time. I write an arrow, and I write the number of chairs they reserved. And I tie that wristband to the chair. If they don't come back in 30 minutes, I'm taking all their stuff. This is going to lead to confrontation. There was one lady that came out and reserved like seven chairs. She saw me writing stuff down, and you could see her feeling a little uncomfortable. So as she starts walking inside, I start writing on the wristband. She comes back outside. Um, what are you doing? Well, ma'am, we have a problem. People come out, reserve all these chairs, go over to the parks, and the people who actually come out here midday to swim have nowhere to put their stuff. I came out here yesterday, and there was no chairs, so I figured I have to do what everybody else is doing. So if I come back here at 2 o'clock, you're going to find me some chairs, right? Ma'am, I'll make sure there are chairs out here for you. Okay. Picks up all her stuff, goes inside. I'm timing everybody. I'm walking by, I'll check the times on the wristbands. Cool, it's been 45 minutes. Grab up everybody's stuff, put it in lost and found in the towel hut. The plan is working. Guests come outside to get in the pool. Their mom and dad have somewhere to sit. Servers can serve them. There's peace on earth. But then we get packed. And people from the parks start coming back and the reserved chairs and their personal items are gone and people are sitting in their spots. These guests start to get mad. They find the roamer. The roamer points the guests over to Jimmy. They go to Jimmy. I can see the confrontation coming. So now, here comes the supervisor and this angry family. Uh, AT, did you, uh, did you, did you, did you move their stuff? Oh yeah, you came out at 7.30. Uh, you laid out seven chairs. You walked back inside. Never saw you again. I put your stuff in Lost and Found. Why would you do that? Ma'am, if you leave your stuff intentionally or unintentionally, it's considered Lost and Found. Oh. I don't blame him. I don't do the same thing. Because that's, 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 just, that's just unfair, man. You know, that's unfair. That actually went better than I thought it was going to go. But then a lot of guests started coming back. And they all started wondering why they couldn't find their seats. And they're all getting sent to Jimmy. There's one thing I didn't account for in my whole master plan. By 2 o'clock, we had a pile of lost and found in the towel hut. I didn't partition off people's stuff. It was just lost and found. Blech. I'm at the top of the slide, and then I hear... Hey, uh... Hey, AT, could you come to the towel hut, please? Uh, I'm at the top of the slide. I, I, should, I think the bump's coming through in like 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm need you to come right now, though. Um, I'm gonna send someone to cover you. We have a situation. I feel that anxiety just creeping up on me. I round the corner and I'm walking to the towel hut and I see this lady with her two kids. They all look peeved. Can I help you, ma'am? Yeah. I laid my stuff out and went inside for a few minutes and my There's a lot of nasty people, man. Stuff is gone and there's Sorry, no chairs. Sorry, I didn't have to say uh, that. Oh, yeah, I remember you. Nasty stink attitude, people, man. Sorry, sorry. You were sitting second row, right? Yes. Yeah, no, actually, um, you were gone for six hours. And, yeah, your stuff is over here. She's telling me what she left out, and I hand her back her stuff, and then I say, is there anything else? And I see this light bulb go off in her head. Yeah, I had this very expensive suntan lotion. Just the way she said it, I already knew she was lying. Okay, ma'am, can you describe or name the brand? I don't remember the brand, but it was in a brown bottle with a tan cap, and it was really expensive. So I'm digging through this pile. I dig through it twice. Well, ma'am, I don't see it. Is there a manager, like a general manager or somebody I can talk to? Next thing I know, I'm walking around the pool deck picking up towels. This lady and her kids are chilling in a cabana. These cabanas are like $125 for half a day. I put two and two together real quick. I know she complained to the GM that I lost her expensive mystery lotion and now she has a free cabana. This goes off for a few days. For the most part, everybody's happy. Word gets out. I, I even develop a nickname. The guests start calling me the towel Nazi. It was going good for a little while. And then one day, the sun wasn't even up. I'm stalking the cabanas and I see this shadowy figure laying stuff out on like 15 chairs. What concerned me was the size of the silhouette. This dude, even in the dark, looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger times two. Bodybuilding competition type body. <laughs> well, this is how we die. You know what? I got this. I go over, right on the wristband. My hands are like shaking as I write this. You guys see this? I am sweating retelling this story. He laid out a bunch of personal items. Suntan lotion, headphones, barbecue grills. What? Had I not witnessed him lay that stuff out and then leave? 
I would have thought nobody is stupid enough to lay all this stuff out here. So that made this whole situation the perfect storm for confrontation. He's not going to come from like, oh man, my stuff is gone, oh well. I know that's not how this is going to go down. I give him a little bit extra time. I give him like an hour. And I don't see this dude, so I pick up all of his towels. I'm on the guard stand, then I start thinking, maybe three o'clock will come, my shift will be over, and I can leave before Arnold Schwarzenegger gets back and kills me. There's a clock on the side of the building, and I'm just eyeballing that second hand, waiting for three, it's like 2.30. I'm like, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, please. I'm almost there, please. Guess who comes strolling out? Schwarzenegger. He sees that his whole room is occupied with other people. Hey, hey, mom, um, I just wanted to call and say I love you. I'm totally not in any danger at all, whatsoever, even remotely. I tell the lifeguards to look at him, and they look at me, and they're ready for a show. I see this guy and his family disappear into the towel hut. <laughs> Yo, E.T., we have a situation. <laughs> oh, man. Hello? Yo, what's up? Hey, we have a situation? We go. You just called and tell me the situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you better come to the towel hut. Alright, uh, guys. Eric, you bump AG. He about to die. <laughs> Aaron bumps me, walk over to the towel hut. Now, I turn the corner and I see this dude, and the first thing I notice is he has what looks like bear claws on his back. How did he get those? I don't know, but this guy seems like, <laughs> like he's very aggressive. He turns around. <laughs> I'm coming to my stuff and he's not here. Did you move my stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yes, sir, I did. What? What possessed you? What did you think? These are my belongings. You want to see collateral damage? I'll give you collateral damage. I will terminate you now. And this guy is just popping off. Still sweating, by the way. It's, I think it's getting, yeah, it's getting bigger. When somebody talks to you like you're a dog, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Amplify that by a whole pool deck of people looking at you. I look up, everybody in the hotel is pressed up against their window looking down at me. The housekeeping ladies are looking down over the balcony. In my head, I'm thinking, this dude's about to swing on me. Okay, Adonde, you need to know what you're going to do. And I make up my mind. I will sit here and take everything this guy's about to give me unless... He swings on me. So anything yeah, man, that's line, all. we good. I will sit here and I will take it. It's that's all, bro. embarrassing. He's in the wrong. I'm in the right. He's just going off because he's not getting his way. So he finishes. You think that's the end of the story. And Sorry, I had a similar approach with uh, a customer when I used to work at a telephone, local telephone company here, right? So listen to me now. He didn't pay his bill, right? And he come to me. Because I was the first person he saw. He called me fat boy. Anybody know I don't like being called fat boy. So anyway, he, yo, fat. He didn't call me fat boy. He said, yeah, he said fat boy. Yo, fat boy, come here. Yo, 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 y'all turn this off. <laughs> My favorite thing was like, y'all didn't do nothing. The company turned your stuff off. Nah, man, nah, man. I can't, I can't, I can't be doing this, man. I'll pay my bill. I said, sir. If you paid your bill, it wouldn't turn off. Either your bill is, either you didn't pay your bill or if you're out of data. Nah, man, nah, man. So, this one, all the professionalism, you know what I mean? I, you know, I smooth fat boy already. I, I smooth with it, you know? I, I slick with my words. So he come, he, remember he's a tall guy, and I'm a short guy too. I'm like, you know, I'm not that tall. So he comes over me. He's like, what he was saying? He was, he was running on with me. You know, well, I was running on him. He just like, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. This is early in the morning. We just opened, you know? And he is screaming, right? He is screaming. My other coworker, pussy, I'm going to say it like that, he saw him talking to me and he ran off. I say, you little bitch. You couldn't even say, you know what I mean? But anyway, I'm taking the, I'm taking the route. I'm taking the route. So, he comes to me. Oh, if you don't face this now, we can have a problem. And he comes over me. He stands close to me and looking down on me. And I'm looking out for him. I put my clipboard to the side. I say, sir, first of all, don't ever step up on me like that again. Huh? I say, sir, if you ever step up on me like that, we have a problem. First of all, all right? I respect you, you respect me. 
and don't raise your voice at me and tell me I better fix it. I ain't better than I fix nothing. What, what, you wanna fight? When he tell me that, <laughs> oh my God, listen. And every instant in my mouth was like, sack this nigga in his mother jaw. Sorry for this notification. I sack this nigga in his motherfucking jaw. So anyway, so I just up. I ain't hit you. I want you hit me first, bitch. I want you hit me first. Oh shit, I fought. I want you hit me first. If you hit me first, and, and the camera see you hit me, I can fuck you up and don't feel bad about it. You feel me? I can't. I, 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 I'm right. That's all in my mind. I was like, Lord, swing, nigga. Swing, nigga. Pretty heavy on me. I just want you. Oh my gosh. Just hit me, nigga. Hit me first. Hit me first. That's all I wanted, right? But he didn't want to hit me. He didn't want to hit. He didn't want to hit me. That's the problem. He didn't want to hit me. So my supervisor hear him yelling. She came on. She was like, all right, come here. So I come. And she dealt with him. And she just sent me in the back. Oh, sorry. I just have to tell a little part of my story. Dealing with customers. No, no, no. Hey, hold up. Yo, uh, AT, you moved her stuff too, bro. Why, Lord? Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Um, he moves some of my stuff too. Okay. I walk into the towel if I go to the washroom pound. What did I move of yours? Um, I had a bracelet. You left a bracelet out here. Yes. The sharks can smell blood in the water now. I didn't pick up any bracelet. Since you're going around picking up everybody's stuff, this is kind of your responsibility. I want to talk to your manager's manager right now. Jimmy comes back out with Mark. This is how she starts off her sentence. Yes, I work for the New York Times. And this man here lost my bracelet. She just smelled free, so she decided to jump on it. She got a cabana for the rest of the week. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I had to do this all over again, I would do the same thing. Because guess who got employee of the month? And with employee of the month, you get a thousand dollar check. Ooh. And when you win employee of the month, you get entered in for employee of the quarter. Guess who won employee of the quarter? But you get another thousand dollar check. Oh, two big bands. When you win employee of the quarter, you get nominated for employee of the year. How much did it bro? Employee of the year. Oh. My acceptance speech for employee of the quarter. I tried to be humble, but it just came out as like bragging. If you have a fear that you're currently dealing with, just face it head on. Me stepping up and facing my fears, put an extra $2,000 in my pocket. Yes, and considering sir. I was making $11,000 a year as a lifeguard, that helped out a lot. $11,000 a year as a lifeguard, okay. Yeah, man, for on a real though, people, I realize I have younger folks watching me. Sorry for my language, please. But don't let nobody bully you. Height don't mean nothing, it don't. Size don't mean nothing. Let me tell you how I look at it. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Simple as that. Remember. <laughs> you, you, you can do it, man. You, you can do it. Don't let nobody bully you. Don't let nobody try to disrespect you. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover, first of all. Don't think I'm a fighter off and be carrying on like that. It's just that I don't like to be. Don't push me. Don't do that. That's a mistake. I lick you. I lick your ass so cool. What's up, man? Don't listen. Calm down, calm down. Anyway, <laughs> I will defend, I will not let nobody walk over, walk over me. I will defend myself. All right? And I don't care what anybody gets. If you bigger than me, nigga, I am hitting you with something for sure. I don't care if it's a fair fight. Nigga, you ain't fair. You bigger than me. What you want me to do? Fight you in my fifth and you six eight? To help, nigga, I'm five eight. You want me six seven and six eight? Nah, nigga, you getting licked. Mm-mm, they're licking you all. With anything that comes in my hand, you get licked with it. And when you're down on your knees, we eye, we see, we eye, we, 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 we eye to eye now. Now I can freaking scrap it all with you then. Why you kick you in your balls and come bring it down to... <sighs> with that being said, face your fears. Don't let nobody bully you kids, please. I'm not saying violence is the answer, but by damn it, if he hits you, hit him back. <laughs> Until we meet again, remember the world is yours. Peace.